This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you today. I pray that you enjoy this divine word this day as I'm going to share this word with you. Let's pray before we begin. And Father, I thank you for your blessed word. Lord, let this word bless your people's lives as they hear this word. And I pray, Lord, anoint me to share your divine word and your prophetic word with your people, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Now, I want to share something powerful um, today. I want to share about, I'm going to speak about the faith in the blood of Jesus, number one, okay? It's going to be faith in the blood of Jesus. But I want to speak about a powerful prophetic dream that my wife Gina had four years ago, about four years ago, 2016. It was a powerful prophetic dream dream that deals with our future and what's coming up we see that what's taking place now different things uh, with the virus that's going on all across the world and that's just a taste of what's to come there's many things that are going to come in the future many plagues many diseases earthquakes like Jesus predicted that's gonna happen so I want to talk about this powerful prophetic dream that's applicable to the whole body of Christ not just fire at the altar but the whole body of Christ and in this dream which is prophetic my wife had this dream and in the dream she was walking and she saw in this dream a bunch of houses okay a bunch of houses they all looked the same and as she was walking she just saw these houses there and all of a sudden she heard there's gonna be a second Passover and then within the dream, she kind of questioned a second Passover. She had never heard that. It's going to be a second Passover. And then as she kept looking at the homes, she says, she heard the voice said, not all these houses have blood on them. Not all these houses have blood on them. So my wife woke up. She told me the dream. I said, baby, that's prophetic. That's a powerful dream. She said, is there any such thing as a second Passover? I said, well... Yeah, the second Passover is coming. But the, we have to know what's the second Passover. In order to know the second Passover, we have to know what's the first Passover. Okay? And what happened in the first Passover? But the Lord spoke to my wife and said, there's going to be a second Passover. So I'm just here to let you know, as God's church, God's people, you and I do not have to fear. Okay? You and I do not have to fear what's going to come on the planet. Okay? We are covenant people with a covenant. And the plagues of Egypt did not touch God's people. God sent 10 plagues to Egypt. 10. And the last plague was that all the firstborn were going to be killed. Man and beast. Okay, Even the animals, the firstborn animals are going to die. But God's people were not touched in the midst of these plagues. Okay, God protected His in the midst of the plague. So that's what you and I have to focus on, that terrible things are going to happen. Isaiah 60 says it clearly, deep darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Gross darkness will cover. So a lot of things are coming up ahead, and God is just preparing us, okay? Giving us a taste of what it could be like, okay? As for you and I to prepare as the church to seek the Lord, to put the Lord first, to be strong in our covenant, know our God, amen? in the midst of all these things, to know the Lord, hold on to the Lord, walk with the Lord, don't draw back, don't you dare draw back, no, no, it's time to move forward in the name of Jesus, okay, so it's, the Lord told my wife, second Passover, there's another Passover coming, second Passover, and not every house was protected by blood, now which houses had the blood, those who were saved, those who had Jesus as Lord and Savior in their lives, okay? The blood of Jesus covers those homes. But those who do not know the Lord, those who have rejected the Lord, there's no blood over those homes. So what does that mean? No salvation and no protection in the lives of those people, okay? But you and I, thank God, we are his sons and daughters and we have a covenant and the blood is over our lives. Now, so let's take a look at the first Passover. Go to Exodus chapter 12. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 12, we see that God instructed Moses and told Moses to tell the children of Israel to grab a lamb. Now, nine plagues have already passed. 
this was the last plague, the 10th plague, because Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not want to let the children of Israel go. God already told him, let my people go. He said, yes. And every time he will harden his heart. You know, the heart of man is the hardest thing in the planet. No matter even the things that are taking place now, people still don't want to yield to the Lord. People still don't want to surrender to the Lord. You know, I text a I sent a message to somebody. Uh, I made a message. I, I did a message called, uh, who wants to be saved today? Do you want to be saved today? The person replied and said, no. <laughs> they replied back and said, no. I said, wow. In the midst of all these things, hard-hearted. People's hearts are cold. They are hard and dry. It don't matter what happens, people's hearts are the hardest things. That's why it takes a miracle, a miracle for the Holy Spirit to get someone to be saved. It, it requires a miracle. It cannot be done with natural means. It has to be supernatural by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because people can see miracles, they can see signs and wonders, and they still don't touch them. Look at Jesus. He worked miracles right before their eyes. Blind eyes seeing, deaf ears hearing, the lame walking. No change. As a matter of fact, they cried out, crucify them after seeing all the miracles. So miracles in themselves does not change the hearts of people. It grabs your attention, but it doesn't change the heart. Only the power of the Holy Spirit. Only when the Holy Spirit opens people's eyes can they really see. So it requires a miracle. So you and I have to pray that God opens people's eyes. And if you're watching this and you do not know the Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit open up your eyes so you can see. That light may flood your heart and mind so you can see what Christ has done and the purpose and plan of God for your life, okay? So I pray that for you. But we see in Exodus chapter 12, after nine plagues, he was still hard, Pharaoh. The tenth plague, God says, that's it. You don't want to let my children go? I'm going to touch your children now. And he allowed the tenth plague, which was that every firstborn was going to die, whether human or beast. And in Exodus chapter 12, we see... But the law says in verse 1, it says the law spoke to Moses and Aaron, okay? So he begins to speak to them of what to do on the day of Passover. And in verse 7, it says they are to kill a lamb. Verse 4, 5, and 6. Kill a lamb, okay? Each family was to get a lamb. And what were they to do? Hold the lamb on the 10th day. And four days later, kill the lamb. Okay, when they were to kill the lamb, they were to get the blood of the lamb, take some hyssop. Hyssop is a plant, okay? Take hyssop, dip, grab some of the blood, and apply the blood over the doorpost. Look at verse 7. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. So they were to grab, eat the animal, take the blood, and Apply the blood, hallelujah, on both doorposts and the lintel, which is the top of the door. That's the sign of the cross, people. Shh. Hallelujah. Jesus, uh, the scriptures was revealing the cross of Christ. The lamb, who's the lamb? Jesus. What's the doorpost? The signs of, of the cross over the doorpost. Put the blood on the two side posts and on the lintel of the house. Now watch this. That's the instructions on verse 7. Now, the thing with God is this. When God tells us to do something... We have to do it. So if he said, go grab a lamb, you, can't, you cannot just say, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I don't want to kill a lamb right now. I, want, I, don't, I don't feel like doing it. No, my friend, when God speaks, you move, okay? God told them, grab a lamb, a lamb for a house. Apply the blood. So it wasn't enough to just get the lamb. When God speaks to you, you have to follow the instructions fully, okay? Grab the lamb. Okay, let's say you obey to that point. But then you had to obey with killing the lamb and eating the lamb. You had to do that too and apply the blood. If they did not apply the blood, no protection. So they had to, by faith, apply the blood, okay, over the doorpost. And look at verse 11. It says, and thus you shall eat it, meaning the Passover, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, meaning ready to get out of Egypt. Hallelujah. So you shall eat it in haste. Haste means quick. That's what I'm saying. You have to obey the law sometimes. Pass. You got to move. It is the Lord's Passover. Okay? And then in verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So this tenth plague was a, was a judgment of the Lord. And he was judging 
the gods of Egypt. The gods of Egypt were judged that day. Not only the gods of Egypt, the people who follow the gods of Egypt, which is the, the people of, of Egypt, okay? God sent judgment. This is what's kind of happening right now. All the false gods of America, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, MLB, all the big sports where people worship the sports. Now, I like sports. Don't, I'm not saying you can't watch sports. But when you worship sports above God, there's a problem. That becomes your God. Everything on shutdown. One little virus. Everything on shutdown. Where's the gods of sports? Nowhere. Businesses shut down. Everything shut down. Okay? Who's the one that has not been shut down? God. God has not shut down. Still alive. Still running well. Amen? So we see that God sent judgment to the gods of Egypt and the people. Verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood. Wow. God says, when I see the blood, what is God going to do? I will pass over. That's why it's called Passover. I'm going to pass over that house and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when i strike the land of egypt so god says when i see the blood i'm gonna pass over that house and nobody's gonna be no nobody's gonna die in that house because the blood that's power in the blood you and i have to have faith in the blood of jesus to protect us to deliver us amen if the shadow okay if the type the shadow, the symbol of the blood of Jesus protected the people. They actually killed the lamb and applied the blood of the lamb, of the animal. And that blood of that lamb protected the people. How much more us under the new covenant, how much more with the precious blood of Jesus shall we not be protected? Hallelujah. They were protected under the shadow. How about much? How much more now under the substance? When we apply the blood of Jesus over our lives, we will not be touched. And God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. So here we see, I will pass over when I see the blood. Verse 21, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, pick out and take lands for yourself according to your family and kill the Passover lamb. Look at verse 22, you shall take a bunch of hyssop, that's a plant, like I said, dip it in the blood that is in the basin. They were to put the blood in a basin and strike the lintel on the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Uh-oh. Here we see self-quarantine. He tells them, none of you shall go out of the door of his house. They were supposed to be in the house. I was laughing with this. I was speaking to Pastor Joseph Samuel, and we were talking about, I was telling him about the plagues of Egypt and this and that, and how they had to apply the blood. And he says, my brother, where were the people of Israel? I said, uh, in that in the house. He said, yes, they were in the house. Okay? Same thing that's going on now. I started laughing when he when he told me because it just it like illuminated me, it highlighted me. That's right. They were in the house. You know, we're not having services live, you know, in the building because of fear. No, we're just obeying the government and, and being uh, precautious, right, to protect the lives of people, you know, so no one gets infected. We want to be carriers of the glory, not carriers of any infection, okay? So, but where were they? They, they were all, we are ordered to stay home now, right? What did God order the children of Israel? Go into your house. Stay there. I will protect you when you are in the house. If you are outside the house, you're going to be killed. Go into your house and relax and have some coffee, cafe bustelo, whatever your coffee you like, okay? Drink your little piña virgin, piña colada, whatever you want. Relax. Put your feet up. Apply the blood and relax in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, we see here, none of you shall go out of the door. So a quarantine was called that day of his house until morning. Now, this was just for, for one night, you know, overnight. Now we have, you know, more days, but it's okay. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. Now, I believe that those destroyers were angels, okay? The angels came. Because listen, God is the Godfather. Yeah, hallelujah. You like that one? God is the Godfather. And he never does the dirty work. He, he sends people to do the dirty work. He sent his angels, his hitmen, 
God being the Godfather, the real Godfather, not the Marlon Brando, the real God, he's our God and he's our Father, Godfather. He sends his people to do the dirty work. And the father stays on his throne, relax. He sends his angels. I know the angels came. Okay, I can prove it with another scripture in Psalms. But angels were sent to destroy, to kill, okay? Because of the plagues, okay, that God sent to execute judgment. So we see that the Godfather relaxed. While the hitman went out, every firstborn child was killed. Okay, why? There's no blood, just like the prophetic dream. No blood over those homes, okay? No blood over those homes. As long as there's no blood, there's no protection. But you and I, we have blood. So you and I must exercise faith in the blood of Jesus. But remember, obedience is what activates the covenant. Obedience activates the covenant. You and I must be obedient children of God. God told them in Passover, there shall be no leaven in your house. Leaven is symbolic of sin, meaning you have to get sin, all sin out of your house. You can't have leaven in your house or sin in your house. You can't legally take hold of the covenant and exercise faith in the covenant if there's sin in your house, if there's sin in your life. And I'm talking about sin that we practice. I'm not talking about, listen, we all have faults and we all have character flaws that God is working with us. But I'm talking about the practice of sin. If you're a Christian and you're living in fornication, you're practicing sin and you know it and you don't want to do nothing. You want to keep the leaven in your house. You do not have legal rights or legal authority to exercise faith in the blood of Jesus when there's sin in your life. Even though you're already saved, you cannot stand in authority, authority and say, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have no right here. No, because sin gives the devil legal right to attack us. He gets legal right to attack us when there's sin in our lives and we know it and we don't want to do anything about it. We want to keep practicing. So the believer that has sin in his life, he has no authority. His authority is stripped. But once we are righteous in Christ and walking right before the Lord in obedience to the Lord, we have authority. We have power. We execute our authority and we declare the word of the Lord over our lives. Amen. So we see here, obedience activates the covenant. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 28, Hebrews chapter 11, how do I exercise faith in the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 11, we see that physically they apply the blood, okay? They physically put the hyssop in, in the basin, took the blood and strike the doorpost and did the sign of the cross basically. But in the new covenant, how do we apply the, the blood? In verse 28, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 28, by faith, talking about Moses and the children of Israel, by faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So we see here, Moses had to obey the instructions of the Lord. That's faith. Faith is obeying what God says to do. And the children of Israel had to obey the instructions that God gave Moses. So doing what God says to do is faith in action. And they physically apply the blood. We do it spiritually. How? With our mouth. We speak. We declare and decree things and things are established. That's how you and I as a new covenant believer apply blood by speaking it. Life and death in the power of the tongue. So in this time of crisis, what do we do? We pray, we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I apply the blood of Jesus over my house, over my children, over my finances. You see, by faith in prayer, with the spirit of faith on us, we declare the promises of God and we declare the word of God and we apply the blood of Jesus by faith with the words of our mouth, by speaking it. But remember, you only have legal authority if you are in Christ and if you're walking right with God. If you're in disobedience to the Lord, you don't have authority. So get that part right. Get right with God so then you can apply the blood. This is just a taste of what's to come, people. And you see the panic with just a little thing, really, that's become global. Just one plague. Can you imagine the things that are coming? And we're going to need to know the power and authority we have 
and have faith in the blood of Jesus and what the blood of Jesus can do to protect us. We need to get a revelation, a greater revelation of the blood of Jesus. So I leave you with this word this, this day. Amen. I leave you with this precious word. There's faith in the power. Have faith in the power of the blood of Jesus to protect us and to keep us from all evil, all danger. For the word of the Lord declares, no evil shall be for you, no plague shall come near your dwelling. Why? You are covenant son and daughter of God. The plagues are for the Egyptians, not for the people of God. And God's people said, Amen and amen. I pray that you enjoy this message and I pray that you ask the Lord for the spirit of revelation. Okay, to understand the blood and get us and begin to study out the power of the blood of Jesus. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. I pray you enjoy the message and now honor the Lord by giving to the Lord, okay? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. How many want God to testify of your gifts? All of us do. And through it, he being there still speaks. So your gift speaks and continues to speak. Every time you give to the Lord's work and, and the kingdom of God, what happens? It comes up as a memorial and it speaks in your behalf. So give to God. In this time where it might be a little crunch time for some people, don't stop giving, even when it gets tight. Listen, it could be a dollar, five dollar. Always give to God. Remember the widow? The widow gave and she didn't have anything. But she still gave whatever she could. Never stop giving. A true believer always gives. So have that in your, in your mind and heart. I'm going to honor you, Lord. And I'm telling you here, that I'm telling you right now that God will not leave you forsaken. God will bless your life. For I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God bless you as you give. Text to 45888 and send your gift. In the mighty name of Jesus, and may the Lord multiply you greatly in Jesus' name.